again. We welcome everyone in Jesus' holy name. We're so grateful to have you in our midst, beloved. And we are grateful to see Babundu and Babupashele and all the visitors. If uh, you are new, we welcome you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me put you to test this morning. As far as we should make a test, we are not going to sin as no magan gera no mang hallelujah enjoy it which by the time this uh, short series is over you must have made some inroads towards walking in the fullness of love amen ulunguru spiza to have more time what time you have and we enjoy it which in bello have more time to for to hero pile the more time and bonga me rules can anyone tell me let me just test you Checking alone. We have spoken about the length, the depth, the width, and the height of God's love. Amen. I get it. Amen. Ukolonga ngelo tisite in summary. What is the depth of God's love? In summary, how would you summarize the depth of God's love? Anyone? You lay down your life. You lay down your life. In other words, you die to self. You die to your preferences. You die to your self-centeredness so that you can serve others. This is what I'm telling you. We said there is no way you can serve in love if you have not died to self. Amen? Amen. So before this year is over, confront your selfishness. Amen? Amen. Maybe something you have never confronted in your life. But I want you to go before the throne and tell God, Lord, I don't want to be selfish. I want to be selfless so that I may walk in love. I want you to understand that selfishness and love don't stay in the same address. Because by nature we said love is not self-seeking. Amen? That's the depth of love. Anyone remembers what's the height of love? Do you remember the height of love? If the scripture instructs you to grasp how high the love of God is, what are you grasping? Let me help you out. We said you ascend into the presence of God. Just like Jesus, when he ascended, he led captives in his trail. And he gave gifts to men. So a place of ascension for a believer means an encounter with the presence of God. So that after that encounter, you are well resourced to love. That's what I'm saying. So, men who are calling the bank of the Lord, who are not going to be You have to ascend to a place where the Spirit of the Lord will begin to impart on you things that you need for your love work. Amen. Amen. Just like when Moses ascended to the mountain, he came back with a, a dimension of an anointing that the nation of Israel needed in order to walk in the ways of God. Mm. And we said we are not anointed for ourselves. When you ascend to a place of intimacy, whatever God imparts on you, it is not meant to make you a celebrity. It is not meant, meant to make you popular, but it's meant for you to serve others. Amen. Any minister who's peddling the gifts of the Spirit for his own brand creation, for his own celebrity status, is missing the point of the anointing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The anointing should make you serve even more because it is the enablement of the Spirit for you to break yokes. It is the divine enablement of the Spirit for you to open prison doors that you will otherwise not be able to open. So, the height of God's love means a believer ascending to a high place, a place of intimacy, a place of communion with God. In that place of communion with God, God enables you to love His people. Amen. <laughs> What did we say is the 
width of his love. How do you grasp the width of God's love? Anyone remembers? One pillar, this is Dr. Osman Bay. Yes, yes, a minute. That's it, that's powerful. This is the perimeter. This is the circumference within which you are surrounded by God. So his love protects. Amen. Amen. His, the psalmist says, where can I go away from your presence? Oh you pursue me. Even if I go to the furthest places of the earth, there I still find you. Praise the name of Jesus. God will pursue you. He will surround you. He will protect you. He even dispatches angels to, them to surround you. That's why the word of God says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him. Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2. As mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds those that fear him. Praise the Lord. You are not alone. You are surrounded by God. He loves you. Again, the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Are you aware that even when you are going through COVID, you are not alone? So what I'm We are now speaking of a new disease. You have been able to weather the storm of COVID. And you are here. Why? Because you went through it with God. Praise the name of Jesus. I can tell you that even through this economic problem that we are facing, the global crisis that we are facing economically, our harm is God who is not scared of challenges you face. Amen. We said he's not a fair weather friend. He will not only <laughs> stick with you when you're doing well. Even when things are not in good shape, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Such is his love for you. He protects you. Amen. 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 Please grasp it. God is your defender. Amen. God is your protector. Amen. That's why we say the name of the Lord is our strong tower. Amen. The rushes run into it and they are safe. Hallelujah. Amen. God will take care of you. We don't know how, but he will. Praise the name of Jesus. One thing I've figured out about God is that I don't have to know what's going to happen next oh, week. Yeah. But somehow, in Mbuja, if you can pay, you pay if you can pay, I went again. Because seven days ago, I did not have answers. Seven days ago, numbers were not adding up. But somehow, because it's God who is your defender. Hallelujah. What is the length of his love? Long suffering. Equal, equal, and I was a beggar, and then it was a time. Gabbage, and Logilla, a company, Nabazawa. Woman, who full of peace and a band, who saw time way, men of the beggars, Malbonka Malekos. So please grasp those four dimensions of love. Praise the Lord. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you be perfect in all four dimensions. Amen. Amen. Today I want us to talk about the walk of love as your identity as a believer. The walk of love as your, as your identity. And uh, we have said this many times that uh, uh, we, 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 once we grow spiritually, you know, when, when you read the word of God and you begin to understand the depth of his word, you will no longer be impressed by how gifted people are. Mm. But you really want to look, to look at their love walk. This is what I'm you. May the Lord help you to pass the test of love. This is what I'm going to put. When you go to places where people are immature, you will mesmerize them by your gifts. You will mesmerize them by your abilities. But when you live in the community of the mature, they don't care what to shumayu pirina no zunemonya o lord. They want to know how is your love work. Amen. Amen. Because that's what truly that's what truly defines a believer. This is what it says in John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. 
a new command I give you. Love one another. As I've loved you. So you must love one another. Listen to this. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Love the emphasis. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Your identity as a follower of Jesus, as we have said many times, hinges on your love walk. I want to emphasize that. If anything you must get out of this message is you are defined by love. Amen. Your identity is defined by love. So, therefore, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you do your best to deal with this issue. And I want you to understand that when you love people, the Spirit of the Lord will confirm it within your heart that you are walking in love. If you are not walking in love, the Spirit of the Lord will also tell you that you need to polish up on certain things. And that is why, Mazarwani, we need to listen to the Spirit of the Lord as we navigate our way in this journey of faith. And let me just say, look at something else. First John chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. This is what it says. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister is still in the darkness. This is powerful. Even if you, you, you do great things for the kingdom, as long as there is hatred for a brother or a sister in your heart, doesn't matter how many years you've been saved, you are still in darkness. That's what the Word of God says. In other words, there should be no place for hatred in the heart of a believer who claims to be born again. And that is why before the service is over, I want you to release some people. Some of you have been working with stuff for too long. Some of you have grudges that you should have let go of long time ago because they are stopping you from loving you need to release some people because there is no place in your heart for strife and for unforgiveness and for hatred praise the name of Jesus if you still have a room in your heart for strife, for bitterness for unforgiveness you are not yet walking in the light you are not yet walking in the light. So that is why we need to define what, what it does it mean. What does it mean to be born again? Mm -hmm. Amen. This is important. And listen, I would rather be unpopular by pointing out that you are not yet walking in the light than to, to pretend before you and, and, and tell you everything that you want to hear. And at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you discover that Gashlegas have never walked in the light. Yo. Let's find this thing out now. Before the day of his coming. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. We need to confront this monster called false conversion. Mm. Being a church goer does not make you a child of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confessing that Jesus is Lord does not make you a child of God. You need to receive him into your heart. And then you need to walk in the light. And how do we walk in the light? According to the scripture, we walk in the light by loving our brother and our sister. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then listen to what it says. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing in them that makes them stumble. The reason why people stumble many times is because they do not love. They walk in hatred. Mm -hmm. This is what it says in verse 11. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Now this even this even takes this further that if you really want to know why people are spiritually blind many times, it's because they are not walking in love. In other words, hatred will make you spiritually blind. If you really want your eyes to be opened, this is a prophetic dimension of love. There's power in love, by the way. There is power in love. Do you see? You see, a person who is who is walking in love, sometimes even if they don't have a prophetic gift, by virtue of walking in light, there is so much glory that surrounds them. They see clear. Praise the name of Jesus. You, you, you will actually think you have met a prophet. 
By virtue of somebody walking in love, they, they, they are surrounded by Shekinah, they are surrounded by the glory of God, they don't stumble. That speaks of accuracy. That speaks of clarity about issues. They're very clear. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, the love I'm talking about here is the love of Jesus Christ, not the love of this world. No. I'm not talking about the love that will buy you teddy bears and, and, and all of that, you know, and then you think people love you. No, no, no. I'm talking about the love of Jesus. When somebody bends for souls, when someone bends for people that God has created, hallelujah. Because, yeah, people can buy you gifts and buy you flowers and they think they love you. I've realized that generosity is not always love. Listen, listen to another one. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clamping cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess, this is where this is. If I give all that I possess to the poor and even give my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. That's what I'm here. There are people who are very generous. Have you ever noticed actually that you, you have even philanthropists? People who give to humanitarian work and yet are not walking in the love of God. Yeah. yeah. We, we do have people who are philanthropists and yet are actually doing things that are killing people on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. We have billionaires. They, give, they don't mind giving billions for social justice issues. But behind closed doors, they are devising your demise as humanity. So we've come, we've come to understand that not all giving is an expression of love. Even in the church, not all giving is an expression of love. That is why, if you understand this, you will not allow anyone to blackmail you by their giving. I'm speaking from experience. We, we, in my walk of faith, I have lost business people, powerful business people. Sure. Simply because I could discern who they are giving. Yeah. And when you are no longer, when, 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 when you are not willing to, to succumb to their demands, then they walk away. That's when you realize this was giving with an agenda. Mm. So it's all about telling you. So I want you to understand that prophecy does not define a child of God. Even if you have faith that can move mountains, that does not define your identity in Christ. Very please be careful of this one. Even if you can speak in tongues, because you see, your identity must lend you into the presence of God for eternity. In my view, it is not enough for you to be defined as a Christian on the basis that you have faith, on the basis that you can prophesy, on the basis that you can speak in tongues if you will not see Jesus. A true working definition of what a believer is must lend you in the presence of God for eternity. Amen. That is why in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus again says, Some will come to me on that day and say, But we preached in your name. We even drove out demons in your name. But Jesus says, I, will ne I never knew you. I, how come people are moving mountains by faith? Speaking in tongues. How come people are doing great things for the kingdom? But they are not known in heaven. It's the love issue. It's the love issue. That is why we need, let me use, <laughs> let me use my longest language. We have to name this. <laughs> You've got to nail this, beloved. Nail this. And, and I can even venture out and say, maybe make it your mission this year to focus on love. 
And I do believe that the rest of the giftings can flow out of love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In actual fact, the point of departure for any child of God who is anointed must be love. Don't allow your ministry to take off from a position of competition. Don't allow your ministry to take off from a position of wanting to prove a point. You have no point to prove. Hallelujah. This takes, this takes us to another scripture. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. It says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught... In a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, mm -hmm. or you may be tempted. Then there's two. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Carry each other's burdens. And again, you see, now this is another delicate issue in the church. Your patience with believers who are struggling. That is another dimension of love. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the long suffering that we've spoken about. The length of God's love. You, you, you see, if you really want to know how developing or how much progress you are making in the area of love, check how you react to a believer who's struggling. You're going to go quiet, quiet on me on this one. Amen. Because uh, you probably are remembering some examples of people that you could not put up with. You cannot confine your love walk to people that are fully made. Your love walk must not be confined to people that are fine. You must love even the broken. You must love even the messed up ones. You, know? you must love even those that are difficult to love. Sure. Praise the name of Jesus. That's why the scripture says here, bear with one another. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that will fulfill the law of Christ and that's important. Now we come to discover in this passage that we are not a lawless society. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. We are not a lawless people just because we are in, in the covenant of grace. Just because we are in the new dispensation of grace? No, no, no. There is still something called the law of Christ. Amen. What is the law of Christ? It is love. Amen. Yes, of it. If you really want to fulfill the law of Christ, to walk in love. And this is what it says in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 10. It says, let no debt remain outstanding. Accept the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. That's powerful. Amen. Whoever loves people has fulfilled the law. I want to emphasize, just because we are in the dispensation of grace, it does not mean that there is no more law. <laughs> there is law. <laughs> it is only <laughs> the Antichrist who promotes lawlessness. Yeah. Unfortunately, the spirit of the Antichrist is beginning to find traction even within the church. Yeah. We are trying to, pre to preach a grace message that suggests that there is no more law. No, no, no. There is law. And this is the law of Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the law of Christ is summed up in this. We walk in love. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And then it says... The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not convert. Whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one command. I love this. All these hundreds and hundreds of laws in the book of Leviticus, in the old order, all those hundreds and hundreds of laws, they are summed up in this one command. I love this. I love the simplicity of Jesus. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. My God, hallelujah. Yeah. When you love your neighbor, you will not do harm. You, you, when, you, when you walk in love, as a lawyer, <laughs> the love of God will so much consume you, no one will have to tell you that you don't have to commit adultery. Yeah. 
Yes, Amen. Amen. When, when the love of God is so strongly established in your, in your heart, you will not be told, don't steal. Because stealing is going to hurt somebody. No one will tell you that. No one will tell you that we don't do extramarital affairs. No one will tell you that. No one, even for young people, no one will tell you, young men, that you don't sleep with a girl before marriage. Because you're going to hurt that girl. Your love as a young man will be so strong to a point that this is my sister, I'm not going to hurt her. You see how love can help you walk in holiness? True love can help you walk in holiness so that we don't have a list of do's and don'ts in the church. Whenever you meet somebody who is asking, is this sin? Is this sin? Is this sin? The chances are the love of God has not been fully established in their hearts. Because when you walk in love, you figure out things that will hurt people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you walk in love, you will check even the way you make jokes. Yeah. You don't just joke anyhow, because you process in your head first. How will this joke land on the other side? Says one of which. Praise the Lord. You'll be amazed how powerful. In actual fact, when you when the love of God has been entrenched in your heart, you will fulfill all the commandments without even you noticing. That's the power of love. That's the power of love. Praise the name of Jesus. And I pray that this love be deeply established in your heart. Listen to this passage, Galatians 5, verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Mm -hmm. Aha. Now, th this is where we, 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 we need to go back a bit. I said to you, faith does not define a believer. And I could hear you getting quiet. Oh. The just shall live by faith. Let us get a fuller story. The faith that will help you graduate into eternity is the faith that expresses itself through love. In other words, it's not going to help us for you Ube is called as move among mountains. Please, this is very important. This is very delicate. You can actually have a gift of faith, of faith that will make people rise up from wheelchairs without walking in love. You have a gift of faith. But faith that matters before God is the one that is driven by love. Praise the name of Jesus. When you are driven by love. Well, in other words, when you pray for something, you don't even pray to prove a point. Yeah. Yeah. You see a person on the wheelchair, you yeah. say, Father, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm broken over this situation. That is why, notice what the word of God often says about Jesus. He was moved by compassion. Yes. And then he laid hands on the sick. Yeah. Do, you, do you understand that? Yeah. That's what should move you. Yeah. Don't try to prove that your ministry is more powerful than Benny Hinn's ministry. Yeah. As long as you're still in that dimension, you can still make things happen if you have a gift of faith. But that counts for nothing in heaven. Mm. Hallelujah. Says so Amen. Faith must express itself by love. Mm. That's the faith that will count in eternity. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't take it for, please, let's just go back. I want you to tread on this one cautiously. Don't take it for granted that the scripture says, even though I have faith that can move mountains, if I don't have love, I'm like a clanging gong. It is vanity of vanity. Please don't take those words for granted. Paul is saying that for a reason. And the reason why we're sharing this this morning is, is because we don't want you to be stuck in that rut of being a dynamic minister of the gospel when you have no love in your heart. And because you can be vibrant and dynamic. That's why gifting, spiritual gifting, can be a very dangerous thing 
if we don't get these things right. Praise the name of Jesus. And many people are deceived by their own gifts. As long as the gift continues to operate, I have this false assurance that I'm still in the right standing with God. When I'm not walking in love, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you may walk in love. May your faith express itself by love. Amen. I want to talk about spiritual disciplines of believers who consistently walk in love. There are spiritual disciplines that I want us to get down again so that we consistently walk in love. Number one, their personal de devotions are different. It's quite interesting that in their devotions, they don't focus on what many people focus on. You know, uh, most of us in our devotions, we, we go for things, material things, and, and, and things that we need to get from God, you know. Father, I come before you and, and deal with my economic situation, deal with my job situation. Father, I present my business before you. Many of us, those are prayers that we make in our private space. But people who consistently walk in love, they go before God, and this is their predominant issue with God. Lord, give me your character. Lord, impart on me your nature so that I will minister effectively so that I can minister to others from a position of strength. Praise the name of Jesus. That's their prayer. That is why we spoke about ascending to a high place. When you ascend, <laughs> Moses, when he ascended, the when you ascend, sometimes even preachers, even preachers, they mislead us in these issues, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the when you are said, may you come back with the nature of God upon your life. May you come back with the glory of God upon your life. May Christ be seen even more clearly upon your life. That's the kind of ascending that we need in these last days. Those things will chase after you when you are serving God in love. Praise the name of Jesus. When you are serving God in love, material blessings will just chase after you. You will not even notice at times. Hallelujah. I guess it has an end of when you... So that when you get there for the right reasons, praise the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I love the Amplified Version. The love of God has been broadly, abundantly, shed into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So when I go before God, my prayer language changes if I want to consistently walk in love. I begin to tell God about the struggle at times. As long as it's not language, it's not a language. It's not a language. It's not It's as long as I still speak that language, I need to go before God and say, Father, create in me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit so that I can love your people, including the difficult ones. Praise the name of Jesus. Why? Because it is the spirit of God that broadly, abundantly pours God's love into our hearts. And when that love has been broadly, abundantly poured into your heart, you will not fail to love. That's a devotion of a believer who wants to consistently walk in love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. 
you ask the Holy Spirit, teach me how to love. Teach me how to love. Secondly, those who are consistently walking in love are spirit-led and they are not driven by the desires of the flesh. Amen. They don't walk in the flesh. If they walk in the flesh, they repent and they repent quickly. Once they identify that they are fleshly tendencies, they make a turnaround, a quick turnaround, because they know that the desires of the flesh are at war with the love walk. Praise the name of Jesus. Please understand this. You cannot walk in the flesh and love biblically and love the way God wants you to love. You can't do it. It can't be done. You know why? Because in Romans chapter 8, this is what it says. In Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 8, it says the mind that is governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh, listen to this, is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. What is God's law? Do you remember what we said? Is God's law? The walk of love. The work of love. That's God's law. It cannot submit to the law of love. As long as your mind is governed by the desires of the flesh. Number one, it becomes hostile to God. In other words, God becomes your enemy. Please understand that you cannot walk in love when God is already your enemy. For you to effectively walk in love, you have to be a friend of God. And how do you become a friend of God? You are led by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So when we are walking in the flesh, we become arch enemies of God. And, and, and please understand this. Even if you are born again, you can walk in the flesh and end up being an enemy of God while singing choruses. Yeah. While singing choruses. Just me, I'm tired. I'm tired of Jesus. God does still. The heaven looks at you, the, the, the heaven is looking at an enemy. This, this is what it says. Please walk with me. This is what it says. <laughs> In the book of uh, First John, First John chapter, chapter 2, verses uh, 15 to 16. First John chapter 2, verses 15 to 16. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes from comes not from the Father, but from the world. Yeah. If you love the world, the love of the Father cannot be in you. It is for this reason that you end up being an enemy of God. And once you are an enemy of God, you will begin to be hostile. You become hostile even to the righteous. This is where you get a clash between Abbas and Ram. This is where we clash. We turn up to some are walking in the spirit and some are walking in the flesh. And there is hostility brewing even in the house of the Lord. We are going to scatter his name. Especially less in the less ignorance is vague. You can rest assured that one or two are walking in the flesh. Amen. Because immediately the flesh makes you hostile against God and against his people. Listen to James chapter 4. Over score. This is what it says to James chapter 4. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Ah, there was a lot. Friendship with the world. I guess school learn in the friendship with the world. Because it is very subtle. It's very subtle in the friendship with the world. We have only friendship with the world. We pass all. Because many of us are friends of the world and we don't even know it. When materialism becomes become so important to you, it even hinders your love walk. There are certain things of the spirit that can wait when you are busy with certain worldly things. Please watch for that. 
Because many of us are already in this space of materialism, but as God. God has allowed you to be in this world, but remember, you are not of this world. Please say it with me, I'm not of this world. I am not of this world. I like practical things. Please don't allow any television program to interfere with your prayer life. Yes, the Lord. Don't be so much in the flesh that there are spiritual things that you are beginning to undermine because you love entertainment. You love the things of this world. When your favorite television program is on, even when the Holy Spirit says you, it's time for prayer, it's time for you to intercede, you want the program to finish first. That's why the Bible says, separate yourself. Come out of Babylon. And then I will be your father. And you will be my sons and daughters. That's what the scripture says. In other words, God is saying, I am missing my sons and daughters. Why? They are stuck in Babylon. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you confront any attachment to the things of this world. Amen. May there be no hold on you. Because man, as long as there is a hold on you, you cannot love the way you're supposed to love. Praise the name of Jesus. This is why you need to watch out for things that are competing with your devotional life. Watch out for those things. The following verse in James chapter 4 verse 5. It's a powerful verse. It reads this way. It says, don't you know or, or do you think scripture says without a reason that he generously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us. Yeah. Hmm. This version says, God is longing generously for the spirit that he has caused to dwell in us. There's another version that uh, I've come across, which is quite interesting. In actual fact, many Bible scholars believe that this is the original interpretation. It says, the spirit of God within us envies intensely. The spirit of the living God that you receive when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior is very jealous. It is a spirit that is filled with envy. In, in the, in, in, this, is, this is how the, the, the envy of the Holy Spirit manifests. When you begin to drift away from God because of the things of this world, the Holy Spirit is very jealous. You hurt him. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Every time you sit in front of, of, of that television set when he's nudging you to pray. Every time you say, I'm going to miss church because uh, 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 Bafana Bafana is playing. And, and I'm going to miss this prayer meeting because Manchester United is praying. Every, is playing. Every time you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Hey. Yes, it was a lot. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and I fully understand. Sure. I fully understand. If you did an anamaso piece, as what time am I laying here? You know, I I I I once I once I once uh, 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 dealt with a situation where one family member was so concerned with the back to back so piece that the family is so obsessed with. Literally, they cannot pray before nine o'clock. And this guy was saying, no, uh, please intervene. In our family situation, things are not okay. We can't pray before nine o'clock because soapies are running back to back. There's, 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 there's uh, Africa magic, this side, there's this, you know. Uh, you, they, people are just glued to their screen. And then we give God our tired hours. And by so doing, you can rest assured that we are grieving the Holy Spirit. He is a spirit, he is the spirit of God that, that, that envies intensely. Please understand it all. Please You have been given the Holy Spirit as a sign of ownership. Yeah. That you belong to God. Yeah. 
And when you want to go back, it's almost like you're undermining the sign of ownership that is on you. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that we do not grieve him. When we begin to do those things, you will definitely struggle to walk in love. That's why in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. Hallelujah. It's either you love one and hate the other. You cannot be devoted to two masters. And then it says you cannot serve both God and money. It's quite interesting that God has called some of us to be businessmen. But one thing that you need to get right if you are to walk in the love of God is you can make money. You can be profitable in business without falling in love with money. Here's what I've got. A lot of people think that for you to be profitable in business, you have to fall in love with money. Please understand in the kingdom, we make money without falling in love with it. That is why even when money comes in millions or billions, it does not move us away from God. Why? Because we are not in love with it. Hallelujah. Says what I'm I've heard about Zalon even sleep when they testified to Nagai Tanda Bazalon. I'm Nagai Tanda Mali. You know how much money he has. We talked to him to testify in a very, maybe let me not say to say that people can't. I'm sure they're very sensitive to what you're saying. Please correct that. Correct that. Money can chase after you even if you are not in love with it. Praise the name of Jesus. Here's the third discipline of people who walk consistently in love. They consistently obey God's word. Consistently obey God's word. This is what it says in John chapter 15 verse 10. It says, if you keep my commands, you remain in my love. I love that. Just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. If you want to remain rooted in God's love, you obey the word of God. One of the signs of a believer who is backsliding or who is becoming rebellious against God is that they begin to grow cold in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Their love grows cold. When you see someone who is growing cold in their love, you must know that they are disobeying God. Because if you obey God, let me please, please catch this. If you obey God, there is no way you will be plucked out of his love. The reason why we consistently walk in love is because we keep obeying Him. We obey Him. That is why, again, we have come to understand that this love thing is not a feeling. Yeah. The reason why people can love consistently is because they are not led by feelings. They obey God all the time and their obedience translates into love walk. They do things even if they don't feel like doing them. As long as it's an instruction from God, they do it. Praise the name of Jesus. So, Zonatania, please don't be led by your feelings. God will cause you to hug somebody that you don't feel like hugging. Why? Because love is not a feeling. Get that right. The reason why many of you are stuck is because you are waiting for a feeling. When love is an obedience thing, love is an obedience thing. That is why even for married couples, please, just, just, just deal with this deception that says, I don't feel like it. Mm, sure. A lot of couples are struggling in their marriages because feelings are no longer as strong as they used to be some years ago. Do you know that even for husband and wife, you need to understand that you, 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 you obediently love your spouse. You don't have to have goosebumps. You don't have to have an adrenaline rush. You don't have to be head over heels. You love them. You love them out of obedience. You hug out of obedience. In actual fact, I, I, I can tell you that if you depend on feelings, because feelings are very short-lived, you will bail out. You will bail out. Even in the church, the reason why sometimes utonuti umoendo elati hamba hamba umbingele. Yeah. Hamba. 
Because to us, we take the Lumut to Lolo, they want the mass of the Lumut. What is the mass of the Lumut? Out of obedience. And you will be amazed that once you have obeyed, because you acted in obedience, you did not wait for a feeling. Love is obedience. A lot of people romanticize the love of God. And that is where your problem is. I've got to have a feeling. No. I've got to have a Yes, I'm so feel. I'm so feel. No, I'm not even a feel. I'm not even a feel. I'm no longer excited. I'm not even a excited. Uh, you know, you are you are so unbiblical. You are so. Who said you must be excited? Please read with me, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. How many of you have come across a description of love that says love is excited? <laughs> Show me a translation that says love is excited. We are going to start on Robeanja. Many of you, when you lose the excitement, you assume that you have lost the love. Sure. Especially married people. Aha, not too. Dear Adam Sachi, you you will be amazed how many Christians have signed divorce papers because they lost excitement. Who said it's exciting? Who said it's exciting? Show me the scripture that says love is exciting. Don't get me wrong, there are moments of excitement. <laughs> Someone is urging to comment. But for this part, but comment against something. I'm a butterfly. I'm a butterfly. What butterflies? What butterflies? Obey God. Obey God. Show me a scripture that says you must have butterflies. Who more people have butterflies? Who's or what? Boom. Don't get me wrong. There are moments of excitement, even in the church. Yeah. There are times when we are so excited to meet each other. There are times when it's so lovely when we meet. But there are times when it's not so nice. Yeah. This is the issue that I'm dealing with. When it's not so nice, that's when you manifest your maturity. And the man who never tend to emphasize the butterflies, this is where they fall. Butterflies, when they don't have the feeling, mm. they walk away. Mm. I'm a gazetta clash. Show me the word that says that. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm here to Before I'm a corner about. Praise the name of Jesus. So, this is what it says. I love this. Listen, please, uh, I want you to, to understand why sometimes there is this hostility and clash in this journey of love. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. Listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. It says, But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives. In Christ triumphal procession. <laughs> That's another issue, Jalo. I want to understand it. I want to call Hey, to eat deep in the call. Are you aware of when you are a captive of Christ? Sure. There's another dimension you're called about the to understand. I keep saying to you, we romanticize the love of God too much. We think this is a Romeo and Juliet thing here. You are a captive. That is why the Bible says you are a slave of righteousness. 
If you read Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7, Paul deals with the issue of being a slave to righteousness. Amen. Do you know what that means? You do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Yes, yeah. 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 You do what is right even if you don't have a feeling for it. So that this is how it says here, we are captives, praise the name of Jesus. We are captives in Christ's triumphal procession. Slaves to righteousness that are living a life of triumph. Praise the name of Jesus. It, it, it sounds like a contradiction. You are a slave of righteousness, but you are triumphant. Praise the name of Jesus. And it continues to say, and God is using us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. was the Lord. As captives, as because we've been captured by this journey of salvation, we are captured in righteousness. Praise the Lord. And as we allow to be captives in this triumphal procession, we are spreading the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ everywhere. So that's why I'm not for it. That's why I said to you, don't wait up until you have a, a convenient time to do outreach. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because you are waiting for an ideal time. Some managers sometimes of Mumba is cleaner. It's cleaner, say about me. It's cleaner, so when's it there, right? Praise the name of Jesus. Because at Kulen Bako, you'll be spreading the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why one of the prophets, I think it was Jeremiah who says, Lord, you deceived me. If not Isaiah, Lord, you deceived me and I was deceived. Sure. Hmm? Sure. That's a heavy statement. Sure. You deceived me and I was deceived. I was, I was, I was led to do things yeah. without even knowing what was in store for me. Yeah. But still I obeyed you. Sure. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Kicking and screaming, I obeyed you. Don't take it as a small thing that Jesus himself came to a moment when he said, Lord, if it be okay with you, let this cup pass by. Which in the was, Jesus is saying, is there another way besides this way? And then he reads in the spirit that no, there is no other way except the cross. And then he says, not my will, but your will be done. So Zohar it was not, it was not nice when Jesus hung on the cross. But because he had you and I in mind, he continued with the, with the whole mission of redeeming mankind to himself. So in our city, forget about the number of feelings. There was nothing exciting about the cross. Yeah. But Jesus understood the depth dimension of love. That is why we talk about you laying down your life so that you can love others. Do, do you know that when you lay down, down your life, it's not exciting? Yeah. Who loves laying down their life? Who, who, who enjoys saying, I'm going to suspend my preferences so that I can hear what other people think? Oh who enjoys that? Nobody does. But we do it, why? Because we obey God. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. And in so doing, we spread the aroma of his knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then it continues to say, to some, we are an aroma that brings life. They will smell life. Yeah. And to others, we are an aroma that brings death. Yes. They will smell death. Why? Because when, as long as they refuse to repent, you are reminding them of where they are going. Just for virtue of showing up. But in spite of all of that, we continue to love. One person, one person to some who are repenting, you are a smell of life. Same person, you are a smell of death to those that are rebellious against God. And then Paul asks a question, who is equal to this task? Thank you, thank you, thanks for coming. You have brought us salvation. I'm celebrated here and they're pursuing my life here. And Paul says, who is equal to this task? But see, our hands of us are running slow, see spread and the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we want to be obedient to God. 
even when they call us names, even if when they threaten our lives, even when they don't like us, we continue. Why? Because we want to obey God. Amen? Here's another thing about people who consistently walk in love. They are vigilant and sober-minded. Vigilant and sober-minded. This is what it says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. It says the end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and sober-minded so that you may pray above all love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sin. I love this. This is Peter. Peter is saying, be alert and maintain sobriety so that you can pray. Now, my mother, if you are not sober, you can't pray. Hey. You do require, uh, the, the, I was looking at the, the Greek word for, for, for alertness and sobriety here. The, 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 it's saffroneo in, in, in Greek. And it, it means a, a very interesting thing. Number one, it means careful consideration. You are carefully considering things around you. You have situational awareness. You are aware of the environment around you. So if you walk in love, you are a person of high consideration. Yes, was alone. We are once born, and then you act appropriately. That's what I'm about to have a bit of a pass. Why? Because they lack consideration. And I pray in Jesus' name that you may have situational awareness. Amen. Know when you are messing up. Be, have an eye, have vision to identify people that need to, 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 to be attended to. Amen. Don't be too charismatic, too excited. You don't even see, you would wait a minute. I think we're missing something here yeah. because you don't have situational awareness. Let me talk very briefly about situational awareness. There are people who are born with it. There are people who are naturally aware. Yeah. If you never seem to see, you told you they are naturally aware. Yeah. This is a person who about the Why is Hakana so That's a gift. But let me tell you something that even if you are not naturally born with it, by virtue of your association of Moyenjo, Moyenjo will bring to your attention that you are not taking care of things oh. around you. You are inconsiderate. So that's what I'm telling you. You are inconsiderate. Please deal with that because I've met Christians who are very inconsiderate. Very inconsiderate too. And there is absolutely no way you can walk in love if, 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 if you are inconsiderate. Please be careful. One blind spot ever as a man is inconsideration. Inconsideration. See careless. See negligent at times. Let me tell you another area of inconsideration that I've seen among Christians. When, when, when every time we meet, you only want us to talk about you. Every time, it does not matter who else needs to be attended to. It has to be about you all the time. You are inconsiderate. Says how are you doing? Do you know that there are people who, who <laughs> you know, I, I have a friend, I think I've told you this, I have a friend, Philip Tobias. When he greets me all the time, all the time, sometimes I, 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 I get embarrassed, all the time, Philip says, Baba Zamuk, Giaming Elel, Ujanu Mamumbali, Ujanu Tando, all the time. And I learned something. This guy is saying, I am fully aware of your family. Wow. Do you know Uti Konabantu who don't even know the name, the names of your children? Even after they've spent 20 years with you. In consideration. 
And I've quoted scriptures for you. Have you ever noticed how considerate Paul was? Yeah. Paul says to the house of so and so. Yeah. And there are so many family members that then he mentions them. Mm. To the house of so and so. And then he mentions them. I salute you. When he sends his farewell, he will name names. Yeah. So, it's not consideration. so in other words, Paul was fully aware of his environment. Why not Shanghanese in a band and look at the Why we are not even trusted to buy a man of Oh, Queen, yes. Oh, Queen. But you know what I'm saying? Because when at this way, we are on the move. We are on the move. Let us take care of these little things, Bazalwan. Because many of us, many of us, this becomes our blind spot. Who is that one? I'm afraid. Who is that? Who just please catch us there, huh? To touch us, huh? Get away with your nitpicking. Get away with you don't have situational awareness. No, 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 afraid. And you cannot fully express love. In a place where you are fully, uh, we are totally oblivious of what's going on. Hallelujah. Here's another element of being vigilant and sober-minded. Uh, I'm, I'm just going through what 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 the Greek uh, 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 packs out about this. It says presence of mind. Presence of mind. <laughs> this is powerful. You cannot love if you're absent-minded. That's <laughs> true. Huh? And I've said to you many times. Our words who to who express who turn the boundary. You are always on your cell phone. Yeah. Always on your cell phone. What's up, Tanda? We put your cell phone. Yeah. We check out my WhatsApp messages. Kuluma now. We are always on WhatsApp. We, 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 no, 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 no. You are not working in love. Sure. You're not. Put down your cell phone yeah. unless there is an emergency. Amen. So it's not Amen. Pay full attention, <laughs> even in conversations. Put down your cell phone and pay full attention. When you use multimedia, you use it with your phone in your pocket. I was so used to say, "So, when you go to church, yes, yeah, right, but of course, yeah, okay, okay." How much are the parents? I'm sorry, you're right. No, you are not working enough. You are not sober-minded. You are not paying full attention. You are absent-minded. And absent-minded people can't walk in love. Yeah. Be present. Amen. Even for your children at home, be present. Yeah. Now, as we see, in the mama social media, you see people who are bazaar. Says, "Who's a bazaar?" Man, who's a bazaar? We bazaar. I mean, they have cell phone parts. I'm a social media ad bazaar. I said, I said, what did I mean? I said, the legend of Azal. In the near Kambanga, we have a group of Zed and Dongan. They're always here. No, but I'm the guy. No, deal with that because listen, you, you, you'll be amazed that before you know it, your children will be out of your home. When most hours were spent on WhatsApp and Facebook and not disciplining them. There's a what I'm the guy. Presence of mind. Amen. Presence of mind. This is this is another meaning, meaning for this uh, word. Uh, uh, sober, sober mind. <laughs> this is powerful. Maintenance of common sense. Wow. This is powerful. Yeah. Now, the the, the the issue of common sense is very important because again, I've seen people who are highly prophetic but who don't have, they don't do well in the area of common sense. Yeah. Have you met people like that? Kuluni chorus. I make kuluni chorus. What do you shy common sense? Reshmaer. What deep prophetic who unpack my mysteries? I say Zului. But when they have to walk in the realm of common sense, they buy a short. Buy a short. I want you to understand that the spirit of the living God that is within you does not only help you to understand the mysteries of heaven. The very same spirit will help you to navigate your way through common sense. Sure. So, Zalmatan, yeah. you don't need to be profoundly prophetic. Uma ubonu mundu elambi. What do they need for? You need common sense. Common sense. 
If you call Musa, you shall figure a solo in a crowing who was sold to a challenge, a bagas, a machine, a bazaar. You don't need to be prophetic with his name, you need to show that he was a common sense. And many of us are failing to walk in common sense. Hallelujah. Without you taking care of common things, you will, you will be compromised in your love walk. Here's another one. Sober-minded. It means not to allow confusion to fill your heart and mind. This is powerful. You don't allow, in other words, confused people can love. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And this also deals with issues of mental health. Mental health. You will, be, you will notice Uti, where there are mental health issues. Very often relationships break down. I'm fully aware that this is a very sensitive issue, but I want you to conquer it. Because many times the devil will use depression, not just to confuse you. He will use bipolar mood disorders, he will use anxiety disorders, not just to confuse you, but he wants to kill your love walk. Because once you're in that state of depression, he knows that you will, you will not feel like people. Social withdrawal, social withdrawal. Why is the enemy making you to withdraw socially? Because he doesn't want you to love people. And he doesn't want you to receive love. This was a lot. So when we talk about the issue of being sober-minded, you are even guarding your heart against depression. When you feel feelings of depression, you rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And, 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 and let me tell you scriptures, let me tell you scriptures, anything, any mental health issue, don't allow it and you have authority over it in Jesus' name. Amen. You have authority over it. You will, let me tell you this, many of us seated here have had exposure to mental health issues. Yeah. Many of us. But I want to beseech you by the message of the Lord, take authority over it. Yeah. Take authority over it in Jesus' name. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you this. In the book of First uh, uh, Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse thirty-three, the Bible says, "God is not the author of confusion." In other words, it's the enemy that brings confusion. So, one of the things that you need to maintain in your life when you feel that there is confusion coming upon your mind is rebuke the devil because it's not of God. Hallelujah! Rebuke, and and those of us who are working with people who have mental health issues, we need to rebuke the devil. Rebuke the devil. Because the spirit of confusion has been poured out into the world so that people lose their sense of sobriety. Hallelujah. Rebuke the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Don't get me wrong, beloved. Take your medication but rebuke the devil. I'm speaking as a medical doctor. I can tell you as a medical doctor a lot of people that are committed to psychiatric wards Many of them have to do that medication for years and years and years. And many of them are in and out of those psychiatric wards. Mm -hmm. Why? Because medication just controls the mood. But they cannot deal with the root problem. Are you hearing me? It is for this reason that we need to ask God, Father, in spite of the medication I'm taking, I want to confront the root problem. The issue that, that, that causes me to behave the way I behave. Confront that in the name of Jesus. Why are you taking your medication? Because believe me, there is no psychiatric therapy that can ever root out the cause which is spiritual. Are you hearing me, beloved? Amen. This is what it says in the book of Isaiah 26 verse 3. When you have rebuilt the spirit of confusion, when you have waged war, against the spirit of confusion. Please do this. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. One of the things that a believer must do is to trust in God always. It does not matter what happens around you. Tell the Lord, Lord I trust you. Lord I trust you. Lord I trust you. Even if you feel that maybe God betrayed you, maybe you feel like God should have intervened in that situation, but you must stubbornly declare that I trust in the Lord. Doesn't make sense, but Lord I trust in you. 
Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I trust in you. I don't have a solution about the way forward, but I trust in you, Jesus. I trust in you. You'll be amazed that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will then guard your heart and mind. And the word God means protect. Why? Because there is an enemy that wants to bring confusion into your mind. How do you protect against confusion? You put your trust in God. Yes. We put our trust in God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray against every mental health issue that the enemy is bringing into our, into our hearts and into our minds. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that there be a hedge of fire around your children, oh God. This is not a message of condemnation, but this is a message that says, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Depression is not your portion. Anxiety is not your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, confusion is not your portion. Bipolar mood disorder is not your portion. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Put your trust in God. And God will deliver you. God is faithful to open those prison doors so that you are able to walk in love and to receive love. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> this, this is what it means as well. It means you have control over your emotions. Hallelujah. You have control over your emotions. But this is important. Once you blow a fuse, I'll cause it. You shall not just say, come on, no, slow down. No, 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 full much air, full much air. You're full of full much air. No, 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 I, I want to give them a piece of mind. Someone said, if you keep on giving people your piece of mind, there'll be nothing left in them. <laughs> Why do you go around giving people your piece of mind? Can't you see that you are literally finishing your mind? <laughs> I don't know what who biblical that we go around telling people off. If people can come along and let you judge away, you have to tell them off. This is not of God. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you have good control over your emotions. Hallelujah. The Bible says, why do you give the devil a foothold? One of the reasons why people cannot walk in love is because they cannot control their emotions. Sure. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you understand that anger, uncontrolled anger, cannot reside in the same place as love. Sure. That is why the Bible says love is not easily angered. Yeah. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse, verse 20, it says, human anger cannot produce the righteousness of God. Wow. That's very powerful. Wow. Wow. Human anger can never produce the righteousness of God. Says so I know it. <laughs> Many of you, you even say, no, 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 I was, I was, I was manifesting holy anger. Oh. <laughs> 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 Why do you say holy anger? <laughs> Let me tell you about holy anger. Read the book of Revelation and see the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments and the bold judgments. That's holy end. I was to do hamba and yame. Who was to do holy end? Was a yame. No, 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 Listen. Whatever you are confronting, confront it as a believer. This is the principle that all of you need to take home. When you have confronted something, by the time you are done, let no one doubt that. I, yeah. Many of you, you blow a fuse over your steak that was not done the way you ordered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your steak was overdone. When? <laughs> You know why you to take a share of entire steak? It's because we say nyami. Umanga change your food is what I'm asking you to change. We say nyami. 
Now, I want you at this stage to turn to your neighbor and say, Puma in your name. I was, I, no, 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 I was, 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 I Please, Basalwa. We are poor at Eva. And at that point in time, we are not working in love. There's my foot. And there are two. This is our call. This is our call. This is our call to our This is our call to our foot. You know that? Maybe my foot might be faster than. I'm going to be you walk in righteousness and then good things will follow as you pursue righteousness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Good quality Christians. We are born in the house of the house of the house Muto o groomed, discipled, well discipled. Eh? Uma se tu me na no tool, se te hamba o ye o ye Australia se as what this this is a product. S H N Z. Because abas are not bad for children. Never a student of the portrait of them. Hey, kulo kula si zama for it. Let me just close because this this kind of session again. We will talk about eternal perspective some other time. Let's tell enough of it. Let me not hold you long. Maybe Worship Team can come forward. <laughs> One of the things that uh, people who consistently walk in love have is an eternal perspective which is strong. They just want to hear God say, Well done, my faithful servant. These men and women understand the routine. When we get to glory, you will not just be rewarded for what you've done, but you will be rewarded even for the reasons for doing what you did. Heaven does not look at how you did it, but heaven looks at why did you do it, the motivation. And I pray in Jesus' name that every believer may desire to hear God say, Well done, my faithful servant. We will walk in love. We will allow love to be the main motivation behind our ministry activities. Because we really want to hear God say, Well done, my faithful servant. And I want us just to sing this song before we see over like you can imagine. Sim, sou pecuado.